Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Terminus Live. Uh, today we are going to be here with Matt Fredericks. Uh, Matt Frederick, dang it, I knew I was going to do singular. that. Singular. Frederick, singular, mm -hmm. you told me that earlier. Only one Frederick. One of them. The other one, I guess. Hi, I'm Corey. I'm filling in for Katie Couric, who's at home with <laughs> pinworms. <laughs> and your name is? Uh, Dylan. <laughs> um, and yeah, we're, we're going to have the show, but first... A quick plug, we're excited to partner with Thea, the new video network and creative community. You can find Terminus Live at Thea.network every Wednesday after the live stream. So look for us tomorrow. It'll be up there uh, on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. All can right, I, can so I actually ask you about Thea? I know nothing about Thea. Katie it Kerr? A <laughs> She's America's <laughs> sweetheart. Okay. <laughs> Thea is uh, a new video network. Okay. It seems like I'm, I... Don't know. It's Atlanta, it's home, it's it's Atlanta it's based. It's Atlanta based streaming well. service. That's um, excellent. Yeah. In fact, yeah, Hell's Stuff Works has that. content oh, on Sia. Wow. I should uh, start learning about my own company that I work for. <laughs> I just work for them, though. So you do Hell's Stuff Works. Mm -hmm. I do Hell's Stuff Works. And you also works. do Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. Well, or Stuff They Don't Want You to Know is one of these shows that is made by Hell's Stuff Works. Okay. Word. Yeah. Word. Hell's Stuff Works is a. Uh, it started out as a website. Uh, started by this engineer named Marshall Brain, and it's evolved very far from that. And it was just explaining how things functioned, like taking a part of VCR or something. And now we've gotten to the point where we explain more of how the world functions from a societal level, from a historical level. Um, we just branched out a whole lot. And mm. now we make podcasts, and it's a company now called Stuff Media that branched out from How Stuff Works that I officially work for. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And then y'all just launched a new podcast called Monster or Atlanta, Atlanta Monster. Monster. Atlanta Monster. Yes. Yeah, we have a bunch. We, we're releasing new uh, podcasts like every quarter. We're gonna have new new podcasts come out, and Atlanta Monster is one of the latest. And so yeah. that one's like about like supernatural, like kind of like spooky stuff. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. It's a very serious story. Um, about the uh, the case of the missing and murdered children. That's right. That yeah, it occurred from 1979 to 1981, and the uh, serial killer Wayne Williams. Sorry, Dylan. That's, that's I heard sorry. that. I heard though. that. But for some, I got it mixed up. So I got it mixed up because you also did the stuff they don't want you to know. Yes. Where you get into conspiracy theories and stuff yes. like that. That I'm is sorry. I got those. I got those a little confused. There. No worries. I'm, I am a supervising producer on Atlanta Monster, so you know mm -hmm. you would never hear my voice on that show. I help create it with the other uh, the rest of the team, mm -hmm. and uh, stuff they don't want you to know is one that I co-host and co-created. Which it's is almost about. like the producer didn't give you any information or background information. It's, to I don't know it. what you're talking. It about. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stuff they don't want you to know. I see, I actually I listened to that one like about a, a year ago. I forget which ones I listened to, but I I remember liking it. Yeah, it's um, it's weird. It's critical thinking applied to conspiracy theories. Mm. So we cover a lot of topics that some people would roll their eyes at. Some people would you know go f full gung ho and turn off the three sixty. Um, but I guess that doesn't matter because we're just yeah. live streaming, right? Everything's still functioning here. Yeah. I'll just pretend like I'm playing. Wait, what? Did you just turn it off? <laughs> Uh, I did not, but... Weird. <laughs> <There was laughs> yeah. a, we didn't have the game up, but... Uh, it's the 360 or the one? Conspiracy. Oh, man. What is going on? We don't need a video game for this live stream. This is a panel discussion. We <laughs> don't need a premise. We'll just hold this up. This is the game we were supposed to play. Uh, Power Stone 2 for the Dreamcast. This is an actual copy of it. It's an incredible game, fighting game. Came out in the year two thousand. What a year! Yeah, right? that was a that was a great year. Mm -hmm. um, Y two K was, was on everyone's mind. Yeah, that, 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 not really happening. I was just playing this. Yeah. Hey Matt. Yeah. No. Turtle Tom Q. Mm hmm. AKA Adam Sher. Oh, Adam Sher. <laughs> yes. Said, uh, "Will there be real monsters on any of the other stuffs podcast? How do monsters work? I can still see you. I can see everyone." Take the Dreamcast apart. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. How, how does Dreamcast work? Okay, yeah. So, Adam, there's a lot to unpack there. Um, first thing is uh, real monsters. I We've covered Bigfoot several times, and if you happen to believe that that is a true creature, then that would be a real monster. We've never had one on the show, uh, but mm. we have uh, discussed it at length with people who 
truly and fully believe that they are a real species that exists on Stop the it. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many names. Sam Scratch. Names. Yep, yep, Sam Scratch. It's <laughs> my favorite. The Yeti. Um, I, yeah, other monsters like vampires. Some really fascinating stuff out there about the origins of vampires, what it could actually be. Um, stories of, of folklore that's been passed down through generations of people with porphyria. Or is this, isn't there that new thing where, like, rich people are drinking young people's blood to stay yeah. younger? Yeah, they're getting transfusions. They get blood boys. Yes. Uh, it's uh, popularized because by the that, um, that sounds a lot like vampires in the May. It's, yeah. So... We just did an episode on that, actually. Oh, wow. it's, it's talking about real vampires, actually. The mm. entire premise of the episode is, in the future, we may have a cast of rich people who are just taking blood from the uh, unwealthy. In the future? Uh, yeah. It, when I say the future, I mean just a couple years. There, there's some testing going on still about the process. Mm. And, like how much of a trans... Like, do you just do a transfusion with plasma? Because that's currently the way they're fun making it function. Yeah. Or do you go a little further and you do uh, parabiosis, where you actually connect the two humans uh, or, you know, creatures together with their blood systems, like, fully. Which so one are we here? We're this... this we're one? The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright. I think you just keep playing, Dylan. Okay, I'm I don't know how questions. to play this game. You're gonna ask me some questions. Yeah. So, how did you get your start here uh, working at Terminus? Dylan. Working at Terminus. Well, I was hired on as no one cares. About yeah, they me. do. Dylan, come on. Uh, people want to know. <laughs> uh, right in. I was hired. Right the I was pulled so. from. I was pulled off of LinkedIn uh, to nice. fill an editor position. So I mostly just cut. Um, I mostly just cut stuff and did animated graphics and stuff for uh, our uh, advertising content, mm -hmm. or, uh, web content stuff. A little bit of like internal promotional stuff for CMF and. And then when they launched term Terminus, uh, I got involved. I got the idea to start streaming, um, and I just started bringing my computer into work because I don't have a fast enough internet connection at home to stream. So I just started <laughs> doing, like, to stream for Terminus, and then, it, <laughs> then we decided to make it a talk show. And the rest, they say, and now you're here. And then you got attached to it, Corey. And yeah, you, I kind of jumped in. Around, I mean, really, with the talk show portion, it was kind of. I, I kind of helped set that part up of it, whereas Dylan had already kind of set up. And of the, course, Melissa. And then Melissa came on later after we had already done a few episodes because I, it was just like me wow. running back and forth. <laughs> yeah. It was very, very like DIY, um, as opposed to this is just mostly DIY <laughs> the way we have it now. <laughs> this is great. I yeah. love this, and, and it's a really nice to have a third person uh, producer. So thanks, yes. Miss Simpson, Mrs. Simpson. Oh come on! We had someone say I came for Power Stone. So well, oh man, we're really well, sorry. The we can There's the no, disc. so we Hold can't get 480. We can't get 480i or p or what? We can't get 480 Basically, to go our, up. Our AV receiver won't upgrade yeah. the, the to component go. cable uh, right here through HDMI. We don't have a way to capture the video uh, through. The, the component cables. It's really sad. Yeah, it's it's. It's, it's not your fault uh, though. It's not your fault. It's the Dreamcast and only having the component out. Yeah. It's, well, it's mostly our fault. But hopefully, it's <laughs> in the, hopefully in the future, maybe we can get a workaround um, with like some different inputs jargon. And maybe yeah, yeah, that yeah. In the future. Yeah, I'll come back for for it if we if we can make it happen. I would for love sure, it. For sure, for sure. If anyone watching knows how to make that happen. Yeah, come on down. We're all come on down. Come on, yeah, come on down to our, <laughs> our headquarters right now. If you if you come on before we stop streaming, we'll say yeah. your name. The door so is unlocked, so you know. So Matt, I have to yes. ask you, what is your favorite conspiracy theory? Mm. Ooh, ooh, my favorite conspiracy theory. I don't feel like you have to go for like an obscure one. No, no, no. For the well, okay. Well, I was gonna go. It's slightly obscure, but not crazy. It's called Project Bluebeam. Okay. okay. I think I've heard of this. It's uh, it's beautifully insane. I think that's why I like it so much. So this is my Aww. my favorite uh, strange conspiracy that I don't believe, but is so out there that I love it. Um, the idea that somehow the government or some other agencies, uh, global agencies across the world, would fake uh, basically the coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ, huh. uh, as well as Muhammad and all these other people through holograms. They would use holograms to like fake it. 
Yes. Yeah. Essentially. The second coming of Tupac. And uh, then wrapped up in this conspiracy is also the idea that these same agencies, were, whatever they are, would fake a, an alien invasion I've heard that to one. unite yeah. all of the world governments mm-hmm. and all the peoples and religions. I've and heard everything. that's what Independence Day was supposed to be. Essentially, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of inspiration from a lot of this stuff. And then the conspiracies get built on as the pop culture builds up. Of course. Uh, but then the probably my favorite real conspiracy is called the, um, the Banker's Plot. Uh, is that what it's oh, called? Oh man, the business plot. It's called the business uh, plot. That sounds. Uh, <laughs> it just sounds real to me. <laughs> yeah. No, it is real. It's called the yeah. business plot, and it was a, a conspiracy, a real conspiracy, to attempt to cause a coup inside the United States by Prescott Bush, oh. father, uh, father of yeah. the uh, uh, George W. Bush. No, George H. W. Bush, and uh, uh, several other private businesses. They were. Tr- they hired this guy called Smedley Butler, who was a general, mm. and he name. was he was going to lead basically a bunch of these uh, veterans who had returned home, and lead them on a coup, and take over the United States. But Smedley But Smedley Butler came forward and said, "Hey, this is what I'm doing," and he testified. Uh, oh, and wow. there's actually there's a film or a video of a film that he made where he's telling, I believe, Congress or a special. Uh, special session of Congress about what he was planning and what was going on. So yeah, the business plot, we have an episode on that. Mm-hmm. If you want to look it up, uh, video as well. Good stuff. We have a suggestion from TFCB. Okay. Said there's a box called Akura made by the Harbros that will output 480i that hooks up to Dreamcast. I recommend checking it out. Who is that? Raymond's cool too. TFCB. Wait, Wait does that allow us to, to output str- the HDMI? The we'll figure it out. Up right yeah. Is that my heart? Hey. Yes. Oh wow! I just had a uh, <clears throat> oh. Thai chicken salad burp. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Delicious Thai chicken salad, Lovely. by the way. Thanks. What was that place called? Henry's. Henry's. Midtown Henry's. Tavern. I had no idea what it was. I've never been there. It's it's delicious. Good. It was yummy. Yeah. That's good. Very yummy. Uh, so, really fast, I'll just tell you guys how I got started in the industry because oh, yeah, I skipped yeah. I skip that one to you, Dylan. Oh, that's, sorry about that's that. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, I, <laughs> I was flattered that that you took such a uh, interest in me. Well, I wanted to know. I really want to know because you know you guys are here putting on this show every week, and you well, we somehow have, you got here. We have to save something for when we're on another podcast. Oh, yeah. So exactly. now everyone you gotta knows have us got, on your show. Okay, <laughs> done. I'm gonna make that happen. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Ben, Noel, looking at you guys. Uh, so I, I went to Georgia State University, got my degree there, um, minor in journalism, major in film video production. Participated and in Campus Movie Fest. Oh, yeah. Participated in Campus Movie Fest. Roll the footage. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't even know which one you play. Deadbeat Holiday, maybe? Are you uh, still watching, Adam? We'll show him Deadbeat Holiday. I think they'd like that one. I just watched that the other day, by the way. You're well, amazing in it. over there. I can't, I can't oh. quote much of it right now, but it was awesome. Um, anyway, I got on the list serve that Georgia State University has for mm-hmm. film video production, and in 2006, I responded to a How Stuff Works call for an intern, essentially. Oh, wow. And I became an intern in 2006. Wow. Yeah. And then became a videographer, then an editor, then a predator, then a producer, <laughs> then a senior producer, and now I'm a supervising producer. So I've been just, you know... Climbing the ladder. That's great. Yeah. It's been a long time. So you really, you really only work for... My only work. job besides working in the food industry at a private club called... Uh, <laughs> called Piedmont Driving Club wow. uh, is uh, How Stuff Works. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yep. He's a company man. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get my watch in another 10 years or so. <laughs> nice. Yeah, pretty excited about that. But it's been great. Uh, growing with a company like that as it's evolved over time has been, I don't know, just rewarding, I think, because we've always stayed true to what we stand for, mm-hmm. which is essentially being curious and explaining things to other people in a way that they can understand. Yeah. So is there, like, so you, you've been doing these podcasts for a while, and you actually perform on them, too. You're yes. Your audio vocal content. So, like, what kind of tips, as someone, like, asking for a friend... Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, our, our friend... Yeah, he's not, he's not great at it. He kind of zones out a little bit. Okay, yeah. Um, it, as a listener or a producer? As, as a, a person as a, on, yeah, as a producer, on the podcast, what okay. do you think is, like, a good skill set to have 
to like um, to kind of carry the energy through it because there's there's an art. Yeah. It's not just like talking. You have to um, you know. Oh, absolutely. Well, I think it's the kind of thing that you have here where you have to have a nice balance of casual conversation as well as hardcore research mm. of things that you can bring in. Re, re, re like knowing, let's say you're going to yeah, yeah. search, why are we searching again? Yeah. yeah. Let's say you're going to have somebody on your show um, to, I don't know, some guy and uh, <laughs> you just want to know things. No, I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about. I just mean, you know, like is there let me just ask this friend this friend of yours that you're asking about yeah what is the show about um it's about um it's about it's um just about people in Atlanta who do work in the film and gaming okay industry All right. and, we, and they might I think they mm. play games as they interview the person okay okay and um, now you're gonna put this out as a podcast yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a live stream well I'm not my friend is yeah, I mean yeah you're <laughs> sorry you get to stay in there your friend Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, there's no real trick to it. That's one of the things we found out when we started making Stuff You Should Know, our original flagship podcast. We started with completely different hosts. Uh, it, the format was different. It was a much shorter show. And then, you know, we cycled through a couple different hosts. And then eventually, um, Josh Clark was always the host. But then we brought in Chuck Bryant, Charles W. Chuck Bryant, and... Somehow there, they had an energy that you couldn't reproduce, and it wasn't like it was something that was manufactured. It would just happen. It happened when just they were in the room straight. together, and I would say that occurs for successful podcasts. That occurs, hmm. um, and so it's about finding. It's about finding those relationships before you even like decide that this is a show. In my opinion. Adam hmm. said, "Don't consult for anyone without agreeing to an upfront fee, Matt." Oh, oh man, <laughs> Adam, you're on point, dude. <sighs> Do you? Are there uh, any podcasts that you draw like a lot of inspiration from, or that you just uh, really like? Or? Uh, yeah. Well, I was the podcasts that got me started listening to them were comedy podcasts. Mm. So there's one called Comedy Death Ray that is now Comedy Bang Bang. That's mm. part of the Earwolf Network. That was my absolute favorite. Still, I think it's. It's probably still my favorite. Even though the stuff that I make is very different, I think that's my favorite thing to listen to. Hmm. Um, particularly for Scott Ackerman and Paul F. Tompkins and like a whole other host of people that I find to be great on the fly. Um, and I think, again, I think that's what I like about podcasts is a conversation I want to be a part of. Hmm. Right? Hmm. I wish I was sitting in the room with them while they were doing that and I would just laugh my uh, face off. Like the like the Nick Cage movie, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like that, just like just that. like that, right off. Um, <laughs> I love that Adam is watching. I hope you're working, Adam, while you're watching and not just sitting there, you know, watching this. I hope you're actually getting something done because yeah. I know Keep I'm not. Your nose to the ground. <laughs> yeah, Adam works for what is it? What is the name of the company? Amy Polar Smart Aww. Girls. Smart Girls, uh, brilliant individual. Adam and uh, extremely talented. Melissa has a lot of really oh, cool friends. I have no idea They're what I'm doing, but I'm doing friends. it. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah, yes, my friends too. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Adam. I just you know, whatever. Um, your your wife or significant other or right while he's is yeah. went to high school with Corey. Yes, That's, my wife yeah, Diana. My wife Diana uh, lived in Leesburg for a time. And uh, near Albany, Georgia, mm -hmm. and they went to Lee's, Lee what, County High Lee School. County High yes. School. Go Trojans! Oh man, what was the name of the theater? Were you in theater? Mm -hmm. what was oh, yeah. It, what was his name? Oh, uh, Robbie Davis. The Robbie director. Davis. Shout out to Robbie Davis. <laughs> Robbie Davis and the whole Davis clan. I hope you're watching. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, all of, all the Davises are yeah. actually amazing oh, people. Yes, uh, Dottie up. Davis. Somebody else was. Isn't she a radio she host? Was a, she was. I don't think she's. Still a radio host. Yeah, I'll hold she, your drink if you want me to. Uh, <laughs> I was, uh, yeah, didn't know how to navigate all that. You're getting interviewed now, so you have to play. <laughs> um, and then they're both their kids are awesome people too. Yeah. Um, yeah, great, great family. So uh, what? What? How would you describe my wife uh, when she was in high school? Do you? Were, were uh, you? How was, close were you? Not super close but like as close as like people who were in say like theater program <laughs> totally who, there's who a connection in, yeah, there's a connection she was in i think she graduated like 
maybe my sophomore year, I Got think. Got you, yeah. So she was a couple years older than me. Mm. Um, and she was in, I remember I saw her in Sockdology. Yes, with the she, cigar. With the cigar. She yes. got in trouble oh, for that. Yeah, exactly, because <laughs> they, yeah, they weren't supposed to do that at state or regionals mm. or whatever it was. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Yep. My wife smoked a cigar on stage, and what they were rebel. like, they were like, I uh, they, fire. And she's I so anti-smoking, too. I want to say that you can change the rules when after that <laughs> happened, because it, was, it didn't explicitly say that you couldn't have a cigar or something, That's which awesome. is a total Robbie Davis move yep. of, like, don't, just it do it. doesn't say it. It doesn't say it, just do it, and then, yep. yeah, then they had to make a rule. That's, uh, <laughs> I'm, my, my original boss in the video department named Roxanne Reed, her, the thing she taught me that I've held on to the most is when you're in this profession, uh, you, you ask for, for, it's easier to ask for permission, or no, it's easier to ask forgiveness than permission, Mm -hmm. and it really does hold true, especially if you're a creative and you're tasked with making something and you've got somebody above you that's trying to dictate a lot of times what Mm -hmm. that is, Mm -hmm. if you just, I have no idea what that's like, (laughs) yeah, if you just make it and make it awesome on your own, perhaps they will see the genius that you have created. I think, was it like Robert Downey Jr. has that quote, uh, do what you were gonna do anyway, and when they tell you otherwise, just smile and say or smile and say yes, and then do what you're gonna do anyway. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty good coming from him, especially. Wow. Sure, that never got him in any trouble. No, no. <laughs> no, he's fine. He got in trouble, with Captain America. But. <laughs> well, I see. I haven't been following. I'm I'm a father now. I have a little two year old, so everything pop culture. Is just gone. Mm. Uh, the Oscars are coming up, and I haven't seen a single film. I don't think that's uh, in first the best. female cinematographer nomination in history, by the way. Wow! Out there. Wow! For what? Well, yeah. What? Which? It was. Um, oh, what's her name? I threw out the fact, and now I. Oh no worries. Well, <laughs> I'm the Oscars. I'm fly on on her podcast. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Were you guys ever like into Oscar parties? Are you no. currently? I did, My, you know, a little bit. No. Back in the day. I not, never not really. So it's like I mean, it's all rigged, right? It's just like the movies they want. They had the like, did you pay in August. It's, yeah. it's, they don't want you to know that. That's, uh, that's your next Oscars happened already. It's recorded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all CGI. None of those people are real. Yeah. Rachel the, the, Morrison, who was the cinematographer on Mudblood. Oh, nice. Mudbound. 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 Sorry. Mudbound? Harry, Harry Potter took over, and I said Mudblood. Mudblood. It's actually Mudbound. Hey, Mud- that's Mudbound. a pejorative term. I'm sorry. Okay? Yeah. Muggle, please. It's not the preferred nominee. Please. Please. I'm trying to be all inclusive here at Terminus. <sighs> well, we, we always used to do Oscar parties in my friend group, and uh, we would do the ballot and everything, mm, and... Wow. Uh, just my wife would always be really into it. And she would win almost every year, and mm. I was terrible at it because I just liked the cool movies mm. and the yeah. ones the ones that were you know really well done. The the you could see the beauty in the cinematography and all that. Just wasn't I, I liked those movies, but I wouldn't vote for them. So you weren't you weren't factoring in politics. It was just what you thought. Yeah, you and that's what they were good at. My friend uh, Chandler Mays, who was another person that should be on this show at some point. He's uh, he works Come at House Chandler. of Works now. Um, he and my wife would t- would win every year because they looked at the politics. You're absolutely right. They're like, well, this mm-hmm. person didn't win. They were nominated like a year ago, but they didn't win, so they've got to win this year. All that stuff. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna give awards out. I don't know, man. <laughs> That's all good, man. Oh. Yeah, I don't even know that I've ever watched an Oscars ever. I think. Dude. I know, as a filmmaker, which I'm like barely a filmmaker anymore, but <laughs> that's pretty Same. bad. The filmmaker in you is in here. Yeah. Dylan. It's in your chest. You make films in your chest. <laughs> oh, God, get yeah. it out! <laughs> Burst out like aliens. <laughs> God. Trach- we got a trachy, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, um, we used to do Tony parties in high school. Yeah. So what was the last? What was like the last movie you saw in theaters then? If the two oh year, my the god! Two year old, I know two year. That's terrible twos. Yeah, it's dogs and kids. Oh, Coco. He's he's great though. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's the best writer. One day you'll watch this because this is going to get archived at archive.org. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it'll be it'll live on this page forever. 
Oh, to this is going to the, 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 the Library of Congress. Oh! Yeah, we have a thing. <laughs> we partnered with the Library of Congress. Yep. yep. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. To the moon, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be put on a golden record. Like, and shot out there. of the solar system. I'm seriously trying to remember. My wife and I went and saw a movie, and I can't tell you what it was. I don't remember. It was that long ago. Mm. Oh, that, that hurts me. Oh, no. I saw the premiere of The Vault, I think it was called, uh, that my this the president of Stuff Media wrote and stars, or he has a part in. Mm. And it has James Franco Ooh. in it for a second. It's called The Vault. It's a... Uh, it's a genre bender for sure. Hmm. It starts out. Uh, what, what do you think of when you hear the name Vault? I was thinking like a heist movie. It is like a heist movie, and a bank it was produced here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Over it was only a couple of weeks of shooting, I believe. And uh, these these robbers go in and they're going to rob this bank, but there's this vault in the basement and it's haunted. Ooh. So about halfway through the movie, it turns from a heist movie into this horror movie, the ghost story kind of thing. And it's got James Franco in it. And Clint Eastwood's daughter, I want to say something like that. Anyway, uh, shout out to Connell Byrne. Oh, Connell. Yeah. Kind of know. Nice. I know of him. He was in a movie. Uh, uh, the where he plays where, clones. Yeah, the clones. Like I mean, spoiler Man. alert. <laughs> no, it? It, it used to be called like it's not Foxy, it's, and now it's called the reeducation or the re- reconstruction of William Zero. Or yes, like that's that. exactly what it's called. Yep. Yeah. He's an awesome actor. I worked on one actually shot it. And then, no way. Yeah, and then didn't actually get put out for like two or three years later. Yeah. It looked yeah. great. Oh, yeah. It looked really cool. Uh, shout out to Dan Bush. Yeah, Dan Bush. <laughs> we um, we worked with him for a long time making Forward Thinking, the, a Toyota show for with How Stuff Works, oh, nice. with Jonathan Strickland. See, all of these connections in Atlanta, they just it's intertwine and you never know where you are. Maybe... Real maybe you're here in the Ideas United office, but maybe you're not. Mm. Maybe you're not actually here right now. Oh, man. I'm not here right now. <laughs> Spiritually or? <laughs> Just in, Emotionally. in most of the ways. <laughs> when you think about the possibilities of multiverses, it really just, Ugh. the whole thing, it doesn't really Don't matter. Don't even get me started. <laughs> I have very severe opinions about multiverses. Oh, man. Really? No. <laughs> I can, though, if necessary. See, if you just imagine that the multiverses are pages stacked one upon the other, and you just imagine punching a hole through it and jumping down a few levels. Is it like that Jet Li movie where if I kill the other versions the of one? myself... The one? Yes. Yeah, Is you, that what the one was? You have to be the one. Yeah, so if I kill the other versions of myself, I get stronger, right? Yeah, it's like Highlander, but but with yourself. But interdimensionally. Yeah. Whoa. Mm. Yeah, it's intense. I know, mm. but but you know, I'm here for you guys, mm. and um, I'll be your Morpheus. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> are you about to red fill me? Forcibly red fill. I want the red and the blue pill at the same time. Ooh, God, what oh, would that geez. do? I know you go into the mirror, but then you you pass out. Are still working in an office building? Yeah, but they they would know that you took the red pill, so you're gonna get you know taken out anyway. Spoiler oh, alert. Yeah. Matrix, if I, if I, <laughs> 1999. If I remade the Matrix, that's the first thing I would do is change that. Do you think we're living? Yeah. Have you all done a simulation episode? Yeah, for stuff they don't want you to know. Yeah, sure holographic that's... universe simulation mm. theory, all that. So stuff. I do kind of low key believe that believe that like it could be. There's a strong possibility that what we see as existence is some sort of like uh, simulation for higher life forms. A projection of sorts. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, Basically, like uh, I think it's pretty much like Sims. See, we just need to be. We're right now. We're 480i, I mm-hmm. think, pretty much, up, and we up, we up. need to find the box that will upres us, <laughs> just like this oh, Dreamcast God. and Power Stone Two. Presenting. <laughs> yeah, that's well. We're, we're, right now, there is an alternate universe where we got that working. Oh, like Power Stone oh, Two right now. Oh. So why can't we be on that timeline? <laughs> this is the darkest timeline oh, ever. On, this is. But we didn't. But Rayman is so much fun. Actually, no, it's fine. I I found out like a couple months ago that EA almost bought Steam. Whoa! But they Uh didn't, so we're not on the darkest timeline. (laughs) Oh (laughs) my god! Oh! You ever want to have a loot loot crate? Yeah. Loot crate for your uh, game client. Always. (laughs) I shudder to think about that. Oh my god! By the way. No, yeah. uh, the loot, loot, box. Box. loot oh boxes God. are, yeah. Which actually, Steam is <laughs> crawling with, like, loot boxes. It really but is. it's all cosmetic. It's cosmetic, which is the way it should be. Yeah. Because oh. 
you know, if I'm gonna play a game, I'm gonna buy a game. I want to buy all, the whole game. So do you get a, do you get a lot of chances? To, I guess with the kid, you probably don't get to game that much. I. Uh, Okay, I was given last year a PlayStation 4 for Ooh. Father's Day by my parents Ooh. because they said, you know what, Matt, you need something for you. <laughs> We're concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've been a, I mean, I really have been a huge gamer my whole life. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Charles said there goes a uh, potential EA sponsorship. <laughs> oh, no. We don't want it. Oh. We don't want it. I'd rather oh. stop. We, are, <laughs> oh we hold ourselves to higher standards. <laughs> uh, so, wait. Let's uh, move on from that then. Rainbow Bright Seven says hi, Matt. Oh, hey, that's uh, that's Cat. Hey, Cat. Hey, Cat. What's going on? She's a I I I don't want to call you a super fan, Cat, but she's uh, she is a part of live streams with how stuff works. Mm. If there is a live stream, she will be present. Oh, oh nice. Cool. And uh, she is the person it's who Charles. sent me. Oh, right. <laughs> 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 she's. She's the person who sent me, uh, I was telling you I have a Geralt on my desk now, um, of Rivia, sitting on my desk. She's the one who sent that to me. Nice! Yeah. Well, hi, Kat. But yeah, uh, where I have no idea where we were We were talking about games, ago. so you got a PS4. Mm-hmm. I got a PS4, and I'm playing The Witcher 3, mm. and it's going to take me, I've estimated, about three years to play through the game <laughs> at the rate that I currently play, <laughs> because I just don't anymore. Um... But it's um, I still love it. Those moments, like a couple hours before yeah, yeah. I go to bed, oh, it's me time. I see now. I've, I've never played the Witcher series, but I've heard they're really good. That is one of my favorite. Mm. I think my favorite series that exists because of the the uh, the adult storyline, mm-hmm. which is a you know just a thing. Actually, getting to make decisions that have a gray area where there's no right or wrong necessarily, but the decision you make does change the way the rest of the world works and the rest of um, your quests get presented to you and a lot of that stuff. Interesting. Um, and it's... There is... I don't even know if I want to go into this. There is a quest in The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt, which is now an old game at this point. Not mm-hmm. old, but older. Uh, where it involves um, a miscarriage. Oh. A character has a miscarriage. And dealing with the aftermath is actually extremely touching with the father that was a terrible person mm. when it went down, but him like finding redemption through this game. Like, imagine that. That's a storyline in a video game. Why didn't they just get a necromancer to res the baby? <laughs> I don't know. I think it, I mean, they're, they're, re- re- res what, though? Like, if it's, you think if there's like a fetus, then. Well, no, you could resurrect him. I mean, right? If you're Res stru- and then age it? But, like, well, no, if it's, gonna... a, if it's a miscarriage. Oh, well, the, I was thinking, like, maybe it was stillborn. Oh. But no, you said uh, miscarriage. So. Giant, giant trigger warning. Giant yes, trigger warning yes, right here. Well, isn't that like an, a reverse <laughs> of an abortion? Anyway, anyway, we'll, we'll move on from there. The whole idea of saying that was that that game and series is so great because they can tackle something like that with integrity and not it's not funny in any way and it's not hmm. uh, you know it's it's serious, I guess. All right, so unlike some people, yeah. Adam says you can make zombies out of anything. Yeah. And Charles asked if you have any game that you have rage quit. Yes. Uh, well, that's the Souls series that uh, my friend Tyler came on and played here. Uh, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, Demon Souls and all that. I've definitely rage quit that series multiple times. I did break one uh, Xbox 360 controller with it. Mm. I, I had like 60 thousand... You guys know now after playing with Tyler, you bank the souls, right? If you die twice in a row, they're gone. I had like 60-something thousand souls and... Uh, I did something really silly and got distracted and died. Lost them all. Broke controller. Yeah, exciting. Other other things that I've rage quit are fighting games a lot of times. I'll like rage quit Soul a Calibur fighting game. Two. Oh. I broke a couple. I broke two PlayStation 2 controllers on Soul Calibur 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, was it a was it a tournament tournament situation with friends or was it just no, single player? Was just <laughs> The annoying thing about that game is, like, you beat it once, mm-hmm. and, like, this was a size, like, this is kind of, I was a younger gamer. I was younger, I wasn't as mm-hmm. wise as gamers, so, like, oh, I yeah. thought I had to beat every game that I got. Yeah. So, it's like, you beat that game, but then you have to beat it again, and then you have to beat it again. It just keeps getting harder. Do you increase difficulty every yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, but it's, like, the same map or what? I, f- I forget exactly how it was set up, but it was just, like, I was just so sick of, like, playing through it. Over. Dude, I've been there. I've been there. Oh, man. How are you doing, by the way, Corey? You... I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm just chilling. Whoa, this. what is... How... It became a completely different game. I don't mm-hmm. remember this. Yeah. 
like uh, our type. Oh, the music is epic. Are you getting the music in there? Really, like, pump that music in there. This is <laughs> this is good stuff. Oh man. You, you're speaking of music. You said uh, you're a drummer, yes? You uh, yes. I one at one point in my life, I mm. was a drummer, a professional drummer. Professional drummer. Yeah. I got paid, man. Like we would have a gig at the masquerade, and they'd be like, "Here's a hundred dollars, whole band," and we'd be like, "Yes, we're professionals." <laughs> did, they get, did you get drinks too? With yeah, them? you got you got a well, couple see, drink tickets because mm. you, you're gonna probably get like a <laughs> you, like totally worth. Due to your band, I did some underage drinking. Oh uh -huh. really? Yeah. I, no, I did not I did not know that I don't condone, do condone uh, underage drinking yeah uh, unless you're, no unless you want to be cool yeah no, no, no even then <laughs> even then you guys played don't. the Earl and I helped bring in equipment through the back door uh oh and what we was, walked straight out to the bar what was oh, your band jeez I had a couple different ones uh, the major one in Atlanta was called Lions and Scissors mm. it was just a I, I enjoyed it a Is lot, like but rock, it was, paper, scissors? it's a lot like rock, paper, scissors, yeah. What I, genre the, did you play? It's, I mean, it was post-rock, post like, what every, yeah, it, it was every band, but it was good, it was Radiohead-esque and nice, hmm. I enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot of fun to play, let's put it that way. Um, and the bandmates were awesome. Because, you know, a lot of times when you're in a band, have you guys played music at all? Yeah, I play, I play a little bit of music. I mostly just fool around with my friends, but I've been, I've been kind of pra practicing a little bit more lately and, like, like recording stuff. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, do you have anything I could listen to at any point or anybody watching could listen to? Do you have a SoundCloud um, account? Uh, what is the... I forget the... It's not SoundCloud. It's some other... Um, Reverb Nation... I think it... Oh, Bandcamp? I think it might be Bandcamp. Um, but yeah, I have some stuff up, but it's kind of, some of it's kind of rough. Some of it's all right. Um, what? but I've, I've been learning like the mandolin Whoa. and, and, uh, and I've, I've played guitar for a while, but like, I, I'll like, I played it for a while and I forgot it and then I played it again and like, yeah, you know, I picked it back up and every time I pick it back up, I get a little bit better. So I love the mandolin. Do you, have you ever heard of the band Nickel Creek? Oh yeah. I love yeah, Nickel I've Creek. heard of them. I can't, I can't think off the top of my head. Nickel Creek, it's kind of like. Modern bluegrass, or like yeah, pop, pop, pop grass. Yeah, pop grass. <laughs> it is awesome, awesome music. And the the oh, Chris, I think his name is Chris. I can't remember, but he's the mandolin player, mm. and just incredible. You can get inspired, dude. Oh, it's, it's I probably good. should listen to other. <laughs> <laughs> there's one, um, yeah. There's one. There's uh, one man I like. It's like folk punk. That's um, Days and Days. Okay. I actually saw them. I hadn't heard of them before, and I saw them at the Masquerade open for Leftover Crack, and they're really good. And um, I've just fallen in love. I think it's kind of like, um, I mean, there are other bands like that. Like, Andrew Jackson Jihad's a little folk punk, so it's like Mountain Goats. They're a little more folk than punk. Mm -hmm. But I just, I've really fallen in love with that genre. Nice. I don't know. I don't know what it is. That's great. To get into, I, again, like, new music. Is there new music? Does it exist? I, I don't mean, know. There's only 12 notes, so... <laughs> like. Yeah, it's been done. <laughs> oh, come on. There's some good... There's, I'm sure there's emerging good stuff. My wife is a huge music head, and uh, she knows... She has Spotify, and she just gets all, like... What are the, the things where they create a new, new music playlist for you every day? Mm -hmm. And she literally listens to it every day. And so anything that comes out, she knows what it is, and I'm clueless. Like, oh, I'm going to listen to more Cedar Rose from... Uh, 2003. Yeah, I always end up listening <laughs> to music on um, YouTube, and it, it'll like make playlists, but it's always like the same ten songs. Yep. So nice. I'll get, I'll kind of get stuck in like music deserts a little bit, and I need, to, I need to get mm. out of those. I started listening to this Japanese band called Cassiopeia from like the 70s. Nice. And it sounds a lot like um, Nintendo music. Like late, oh yeah. Like late 90s, early 2000s, like Nintendo music, and you could tell it's a huge inspiration. That's cool. It's just but new compositions. They're not actually playing like no, no. no. I mean, this was done like in the seventies and eighties. Wow! And so you, you can just tell that that's where they got their inspiration from. It's kind of like uh, Casio. Cassi Cassi it's yeah, Casio is oh, in like the nice. yeah, C A S I O. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You were too shy. Come uh, on, dang it! All right, so do it again. Rainbow Bright. <laughs> said that presents the question does Matt have music online we can listen to uh, mm. so that's uh, if question. you go to the event page for this event which you can find on social media all over the internet at this moment 
uh, either at Conspiracy Stuff or From at Terminus. At <laughs> Terminus Event dot com. Uh, or Friendster, or MySpace. MySpace <laughs> has a really good spread uh, with a lot of it. Um, my, our Tumblr account, I know Corey's Tumblr account has an updated version of everything. Um, but, no, How did you find my Tumblr account? Yeah, there's a, there are a bunch of links. Uh, you can look up Lions and Scissors Capillaries on Bandcamp. Um, uh, Amperial, which you can't really find anywhere else. There's a link on that Terminus page that you can find for like two songs. Because the bass player uploaded them, and then uh, Broken Poets featuring Chris Colley and Michael Davidson, Uh, and Michael Davidson, who is an industry professional, we need to have on this show. Now I'm going to help you guys get some guests. Now Um, he he is oh I can't remember the name of the company, but he does uh, post audio engineering for a lot of the big shows they get produced around here. Uh, Yeah, and Chris Colley of The Voice fame. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So the new show that I'm producing right now is called Atlanta Monster. Atlanta I'm just Monster. Gonna, I'm going to tell you guys about that just a tiny bit. Okay. And it's not about actual monsters. We've it is. An, I that. mean, it I depends mean, on guess. your definition of a monster. It's not like Dracula's and mummies and Wolfman's. Correct. It's about a serial, a convicted oh. murderer, it's a serial killer. Um, mur- mur- the Serial murders of the children were attributed to him, but he was never convicted of killing any children. He was convicted of killing two adults at the end of the, uh, I believe, 28 victims. Um, He was convicted of those two adults. Hmm. Anyway, uh, if you want to learn more about that, you can listen to Atlanta Monster. It's on Apple Podcasts. Right now, number one on the charts. What? Humble brag. brag. (laughs) I didn't actually make it. I, I mean, I'm the supervising producer, so I helped make it. Mm-hmm. But um, Alex, who's our, our main engineer, basically has been creating the show with Payne Lindsay, who is the host, of, and he's a part of Tenderfoot TV, and he made Up and Vanished. Uh, he and Meredith and Donald, who are on his team, those three and Alex Williams on our team are basically making the show. Um, and then I'm kind of on the periphery being a supervising producer. Mm-hmm. Helping make some decisions and organizing. That's so. Is it. it all the episodes planned out already? Have you already got the whole show kind of? Um, well, it's it's interesting. So the first three episodes are out right now. Mm-hmm. New ones come out every Friday uh, in the morning at midnight. So like Thursday night, Friday morning, and the episode. I, I get a little insider baseball here. The episode for this Friday is not completed yet. Uh-oh. Oh, um, and that's the way. The, well, no, that's the way we're pr- we're producing the show. We're literally bringing in Six new information. In yeah, bring in new information as we get it, the and then put it out. It really is cool. It's a. It's the first time I've ever done anything like this, uh, where we did a huge background research for months and months and months, learning about the case. Mm. We went to UGA. Uh, they have archives there of WSB. The channel was mm-hmm. Channel Two. I don't know exactly what it is now, but it's W uh, WSB. And we got all of their archive audio from 1979 or late 78 to 1983, pretty mm. much. And we're just combing it for everything, learning how the story went down, and then speaking with historians to learn about what was going on you know, in Atlanta as a, as a society at the time, the different separated societies that existed in Atlanta, the city too busy to hate, mm. and like what was actually occurring and all that. And then, uh, then actually going back through the case file, and learning about all the different victims and their stories, talking to victims' families. Uh, it's been a fascinating journey so, so far. How involved are you on the, in the research process? Like, Heavily on the research. That's okay. probably where I'm most... See, that's the one used. thing I was always pretty terrible at, is research, like uh, research papers. I mean, I'm okay, but uh, usually, like... I don't know, it's, it's really hard for me to find good stuff like over the internet, mm-hmm. and that, but that's always like usually the first place i got to look for... Information. No, you know you're not supposed to go down there because there are ghosts floating out. Uh oh. Thanks. <laughs> that's, Thanks. That's how you know. Oh, she Whoa. Said, let me try it again. Let me try oh. one more, three more, three or four more times. Oh. And then. Helicopter hat really works there. Oh yeah. Are those like bongos, drums, or like a djembe? Yeah, that's how. Wow. You, how how do you bounce high? Up so how do you? I don't there? know. So this like. This is kind of open-ended, but like, how yeah. did you start a research project on something like that? Like, where obviously you just went through like a lot of the sources, but like, yeah, like, 
Do you have to like go to the city to get like the transcripts and everything? And well, like, yeah, you make a you make a call to the Atlanta Police call. Department. Then you call the FBI field office. Then you mm. call the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. And then you meet with people and you know see you like you find out that to print out the entire Atlanta missing and murdered children and Wayne Williams court case and all that to print all of that out, it was going to cost. I think the quote was forty thousand dollars, something around that. And then something have to. Quote me, and it was simply for the amount of paper that would have to be printed to get the entire case file. Like, so that was like a fee, just like you have to pay us to have this. It's just, hey, this is going to be forty thousand yeah. dollars worth of paper uh, and a the truck. Case Bring a truck. Right. Yeah. So we uh, we opted to you know go and look at a lot of stuff mm -hmm. rather than because you can go mm -hmm. and do that, and anybody can go and do that if you're interested in any case files, anything like that. You can go. And, and information. yeah, you can you can go to the police department. You can go to the field office and like look through a case, um, as long as it's not sealed. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Like to uh, yeah, sure. Of, sorry if it's a little. No, sweaty. no worries. But one of the um, one of the strangest things that we found, and this has already kind of been revealed, but I can't talk about anything that hasn't yet been revealed in Atlanta Monster. Uh, sorry, guys. Ah, come on. But um, but we talked to some victims' families. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of doubt as to whether Wayne Williams was actually a the person who killed their family, mm. um, which was very strange. That doesn't speak for that's not speaking for all of them because you know each family is a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but the number that we actually spoke to that had doubts made us kind of go, wait, what? Mm. Um, and then when you talk to somebody like Monica Pearson, who was Monica Kaufman at the time the murders were going down, and she's like expressing doubts about. Whether or not this could actually be the guy, I don't know. And that's, Wait, that's basically the premise of the, of well, the, the podcast, right? The that's premise like, of the podcast is just what happened. Yeah, and is there is there anything more that can be found and looked into? So, mm -hmm. um, like it's like all the murders were were like similar circumstances, though. Like it's it's pretty obvious that it was the same person, or like well, they varied. So. Some of the victim, most of the victims, the ones that are like pattern cases, mm. were asphyxiated um, mm. and or strangled, and there are others that were that had like knife wounds, gunshot wounds, and there's a lot of debate about whether or not there are more victims that should have been on the list, or you know fewer victims that some of them shouldn't have been on the list because there was actually somebody who was, it was known that somebody else killed this person. Yeah. Um, there are at least a lot of stories about that mm. that we're looking into. And that we've already talked about on the show, um, but yeah, it's a it's an intense case, and I think the the reason I'm most I guess proud of it is because it's tackling things that we're still dealing with as a society mm -hmm. in this country. Some pretty heavy issues with like how different people are treated, mm -hmm. um, and you know. The position that I'm coming from and being a part of this podcast really makes you look at yourself, and it's been a learning experience, I think, uh, for me personally. Yeah. Uh, and also, it's the first show I've ever worked on that I, I have cried multiple times listening to the own my show or you know the show mm. that I'm helping produce because wow. it's so intense and like emotional. Uh, yeah. Pretty thumbs pretty, up. Pretty downer stuff. Yeah. It really is. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry, you guys. That's game. why, I wanna, dude. That's why I want to play this all day. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at Wayne Williams' face and uh, you know uh, child murders and stuff and the face of evil and then kids that have been missing. So I just needed to have a little. I'm sure. Out. Also, like as a father too, like mm. just knowing that, like being aware every day that people out there are, are like can be like that, and then also like, yeah. Yeah, I'd imagine that's a that's a. It's unsettling. Yeah, mm. yeah, and well, and just that when you when you try and empathize with a parent of one of these uh, kids that got murdered, that's when it really gets you, mm -hmm. uh, at least in my experience. Rainbow Bright said it's intense. I've cried too. Mm. See, right there with you. Thanks, cat. Oh, how do I? No. Oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, well, I didn't plan that correctly. Oh, stop oh, it! No. Oh, no! You gotta hit the switch. Gotta hit that switch again. Hit the switch. Time, time switch. Right. Hold the string. We can do this. But it is interesting because I used to think 
the show that I host, Stuff They Don't Want You To Know, was a real downer and would always, you know, make me feel <laughs> depressed when we would cover something that was pretty heavy. Yeah, it was nothing compared to this. Yeah. So I would say, hey, if you're looking for just some good family-friendly stuff, Stuff They Don't Want You To Know, check it out. <laughs> You'll like it. We only cover serial killers every once in a while. <laughs> Hey, this podcast so far, we've had zero serial killers. That, uh, <laughs> uh, it may come out later that one of our guests was a serial killer, but um, as of right certainly now... Certainly not one of the hosts. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, on a brighter Did note... Did you help yeah. me move a carpet? <laughs> oh, Lord. Ooh. To, oh, a, to Lord. a swamp. Wait, Adam, Adam said there should be more shows where people discuss the facts of a child murder case while playing a family-friendly game. <laughs> See, that we're doing this for, for you, Adam, because we knew you would understand how strange it is and awesome. Uh, you know what? Life is strange. It really is. So why not make it a touch weirder? <laughs> so... No. Have you, oh, no! Have you done the stuff they don't want you to know about the frogs being gay yet? Is that one? <laughs> no, no, I haven't. Have you had a whole Alex Jones segment? Yeah. yeah. We have. We touch on Alex Jones a lot um, when we talk about him as a performer, as well as oh yeah, that's a crazy what's person. Up. Um, well, yeah, but that's the that's the big thing. Like how much of it is a show? And he argued in court when he was doing a custody battle with his yeah, wife that it's that. Yeah, that this is a character that I play, um, and you know that yeah. It's it's fascinating, but then you also and it's really tough when you look at somebody <laughs> like Buy my that. supplement. Adam said no one should touch Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's one of those things. Like when you make a show that focuses on conspiracies, you have to discuss people like Alex Jones. Yeah. Um, and because there are a lot of characters in that world, and so you have to look at them with a critical light and say, okay, they are taking. Wow. You gotta hit the switch. Yeah, I know. I'm. Thinking about Alex Jones now I'm and David Icke. Sorry. Um, sorry. They, uh, sorry, we did that to you. No, it's okay. <laughs> you just uh, you have to take them with a grain of salt in a lot of ways. In other ways, you I don't think it's right to completely ridicule anybody. Do you think um, it's just for their beliefs in disguise? Well, I wish it was. I've read only. that conspiracy. <laughs> um, Bill Hicks would be smarter though, or at least more entertaining. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it is fun when Alex goes on his rants and goes Super Saiyan and all that. Like, I, I love that. Um, I was I liked his cameo in Scanner Darkly. Oh yeah. Um, I always thought that was a fun little bit. But see, because then you're even talking about people like Jesse Ventura. Like, oh yeah. I don't know. They're 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 fascinating characters that a lot of times will have a. Portion of a valid argument. Yeah, they draw you in with like something yeah. that's like real, and then they'll. Yeah, then it then it gets a little it takes too. Some turns. Yeah, well, and and I think the show that we make is specifically for people who are who feel like they're skeptic, mm -hmm. but also are open minded, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of times, if you if you look at that scale of being completely open open minded, where I'm a gullible and I will believe anything you tell me, so I'm a complete skeptic to a default to where I will not believe you unless I've got tangible evidence, empirical evidence that I can sit here and prove. And until that point, what you're saying to me is a lie or not true. On that spectrum, you have to find your, your way into the gray area somewhere or else you're going to be a fanatic. Yeah. Um, and, and it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I tell you about something like the business plot, um, we, we only have one hour left. No, no, no well, we've been going for one what, hour. But we only have Wait, one hour left. The we fourth can... wall. <laughs> that's, that's not, is that why you... Like, if things aren't going well, we can cut it now. Uh, but if... Oh, so, man. we're out of time. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that's fine. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, like... You guys are ruining all of our <laughs> secrets today. People, that's what people want to know. They want to know how the sausage See, is made. They don't want you to know. See, I'm always, I'm always like really, and maybe this is just wishful thinking, but I'm always kind of like sympathetic of like UFO stuff. And mm -hmm. there was a documentary I saw like a couple months ago, Unacknowledged. Yeah, Have we interviewed Stephen Greer on oh, our show. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Off the, that one, it was like, I really liked that one, but it moved so fast that I felt like it was kind of cut to maybe like obscure the information. But like, I think you might be right. On that regard, but yeah, I'm really interested in those cases where it's like they had a pilot see something, and then they also had radar confirm it, because then you have an instrument 
and an eyewitness, that's two points of verification. But then it could all be made up so they could make a movie. And we're to that point. We're on our show in two weeks. We're interviewing this guy named Jeremy, who was part. Of, you remember the breaking story a little while ago about the black budget? Yes, yes. And all of that that was coming out. So mm-hmm. he he had, okay. So I don't, I don't know. There was a. There was a funded black budget project to study unidentified flying objects, Here, I'll take this specifically, oh, yes. specifically yeah, yeah. with uh, militaries, with uh, with people in the navy and the um, the air force, uh-huh. actual unidentified flying object encounters and studying those. Mm. And it was funded by the United States government by tax dollars, and it had been shut down pretty recently. Allegedly, it supposedly it's been shut down at this point, but some of the people involved. Came forward, and I think it's part of the whole thing that uh, the Blink One Eighty Two dude is putting together his new thing. I think it's all wrapped I up into this. About him. Yeah, uh, he's what? got a new. He's I got. No yeah, um, yeah, he's a big. He's a big UFO nut. I I hate to say the Blink One Eighty Two guy. I I don't have. See, usually when we're making our show, I have a computer so I can verify all the facts <laughs> before I say things. Facts have no place here. No, <laughs> no, no. But yes, uh, but we're but the Jeremy is not. Affiliated with that And he's actually got a lot of research In the actual um, video evidence Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about all that stuff And go over it Because there really is video evidence Of pilots chasing things Mm -hmm. And they don't know what it is And it doesn't seem to be functioning The way that any normal aircraft would function Mm -hmm. And you know That kind of thing is That's what gets the kid in me Really excited And I think that's why we wanted To make our show in the first place Right It's all weather balloons Alright Yeah Swamp gas Swamp gas Rainbow Bright said I'll sit here and watch for another hour (laughs) <laughs> nice. Charles said they draw you in like a circus carny. Folks want to believe that half chick and half squirrel is possible. Mm-hmm. And Adam said Tom freaking DeLong. I don't know, I've met some squirrely looking chicks. Thank you, Tom DeLong. He was dropping hints forever, and then he dropped a bombshell where it's like, we're, we're going to do this. I forget exactly what his company says they're going to do, but it's some amazing things that I highly doubt they'll be oh, able to do, but it could be awesome. This is a complicated level you got yourself into here. It's helicopter centric. I'm really Ooh. glad I picked it up because this is a really fun level. You're really missing out. Oh man, this is cool. <laughs> Do you want to try? <laughs> no, no, keep going. One conspiracy. <coughs> or, oh wow, that's wild. Like real, <clears throat> not even like real conspiracy, but like these videos that I would see on YouTube mm-hmm. were uh, fallen angel videos. It's like yeah, a very specific a of subset of like conspiracy Wait, videos. Wait, what is? What are you talking about? So. It's kind of like a UFO video in that a lot of times the, the general like setup would be it would be someone videotaping something and something would fall from the distance and then they would go to find it in the woods, usually at night, mm. and then they would see feathers scattered on the ground. Oh, I've seen this horror movie. And then, and then they would see like something that's kind of dead and then suddenly it would look at you and they say it was like an angel that fell because it was like... But nobody, and, nobody kept rolling? Like Matt Damon. They all, and they all cut immediately. Oh, the, well, you know, standard. standard <laughs> I'm not here to, to debate the... Dog. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> that's, that's all. The last four said is God. And so I just thought that was... That's I don't awesome. know if you, like, touched on that at all. Oh, uh, no. Here, but I just thought that was an interesting, like... It's like that weird mix of religion and conspiracy yeah. videos. Oh, that's really theories. cool. The Nephilim have but, come down. But they look monstrous. Like, they don't look angelic when you actually see them. Because so, I think they're scare videos for the most part. Yeah. So are Let's you familiar see. at all with, like, Terrence McKenna? Yeah. Oh, see, he's like he's like my crackpot because he gets into like any kind of crazy theory. He'll like give it some like he'll give it like a moment. He'll give it a, he'll give it a plausibility. Yeah, he'll he'll give it some thought, and a lot of times he'll show you where the where the seed of truth lies. Mm. Again, that mm. like that's the whole point of what we want to do: find that seed of truth and find out what's uh, BS. Fuck you, bird. I think it's like. You know, like in Men in Black, when they pick up the National Enquirer? Yeah. And that's the actual news? Pretty sure it's that. Pretty sure that's how it works. I mean, sometimes I think that might be true. Because you you can easily get an interview with the National Enquirer, even if, you know, the Washington Post and the New York Times won't take your call. Yeah. The truth is out there. (laughs) I want to believe. Speaking speaking of uh, something you put in your bio... uh, Mm -hmm. Falling in love with a certain redhead FBI agent. Yes, yes. You watched any of the new? I watched the Netflix ones. I haven't watched any of the brand new stuff because I don't have cable. Uh, What's Fox? It's on Fox. Fox. Yeah, 
Fox. No, like, normal, come back, just network. my babies. You should, you should be able to have it with like an, an antenna if you have an antenna. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just on normal ass Fox. Oh, what? Like oh it was God. back in the. It's the same opening credits actually. Oh my God. Like it's still. It's the, it, it, they just look younger, but it's just. Dun, 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 dun. <sighs> yeah, I'm so excited to go home. Yeah, <laughs> the, well, the, and see my family, and then also watch X Files. Just to let you know, the the first episode was really not so great, but the ones after when they don't have. I don't know how how were you really into like um like the Smoking Man and like yeah. kind of that main yeah. storyline. Oh, you might like it then. I always kind of like the Monster of the Week stuff better. Okay, than, like, that main. I'm. For me, it was all about the large alien conspiracy anymore. through line. Right. That right. was that was me. Well, unless you got into the, you, I forget the name of it, but the monster oh, that lived in the sewers that had the crazy mouth. It was from like the second season, I want to say, maybe the first oh, season. I don't remember. And it would, uh, I I was terrified as a kid that this thing would find me and like attack me mm-hmm. on my butt through the. Toilet. Yeah, I had to fear the, snakes like that. The guy who mm-hmm. can him, can go through like grates and like yeah, oh yeah. Geez. the T one thousand yeah T one thousand that too that one used terrifying. to that one and the uh, the bugs that eat you if the lights are out yeah those oh. two I was From convinced who? the corner <laughs> yep. of my room was glowing at all like when I was that's like the bed. only episode of Doctor Who I've ever actually seen the angels so this is like the one the no the one with the, the, the darkness bugs or whatever yeah. You'd have, they'd have like two shadows and it's like oh no so you know, this is supposed to have one shadow. This is a good segue. This is what, hard. what shows did you watch yeah. growing up besides X Files? And besides X Files, yeah, let's what, see. What were some of your favorite movies and television shows growing up? What was like your like defining shows? I would say. Saved by the Bell, obviously. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Those are fucking like conspiracy Voltron. shows. Uh, um, <laughs> no, please, no, don't don't like tell your answers to me. But no. well, the, I would say. I would say the fascination with the unknown mm-hmm. started a lot. In the games, a see. lot with. Are I you thi- afraid of the dark? Oh, well, yeah. are, I mean, are you afraid of the dark? One hundred percent with ghost stories and ideas like that. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, that was just a solid, solid show. Yeah. It, well, have you have you tried again? I refuse to look at it. I now. tried again. <laughs> I shouldn't have tried again. Um, it's fine. And like Goosebumps, I read oh! Goosebumps the books mm-hmm. as a kid. And that was something that always got me into that spooky. She's it opened up the spooky ending. side of myself. Yeah, choose your own ending. But um, man, I keep losing myself because I'm I thinking about what Melissa's saying. Then I'm looking up here and I'm watching you fail so hard, but you're trying and you're you're really trying. I couldn't do it. That's the only reason why I'm saying that. Um, but then other conspiracy shows or shows other shows that. <laughs> Piqued my interest in that. I'm just gonna let you it don't go. have to limit yourself to that. You could, you well, I grew I grew up guy, very guys. religious as a kid, mm-hmm. like extremely mm-hmm. religious, uh, self imposed religious. Interesting. And um, that certainty mm-hmm. that I always had in something that is it's very mystical. If you think about you know uh, oh, Christianity oh, yeah. in general, the the idea of all of these the miracles and the origins of a lot of the things, mm-hmm. it's it's very mythical. In a way, and I don't mean that what? in any kind of derogatory way. It just, it just is, um, and that allowed my mind, I think, to bring in all these other ideas and concepts, oh God. and look at them oh God. a lot less oh God. skeptically. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, this is good. No, yo, oh. you're fine. I think you got, you got this. this. Oh, wait. Oh. 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 There you go. It's your boy. It's your boy. Wow, that was really, really good. <laughs> nice, dude. I did it. Man. Well, Kat had another question. Mm-hmm. She, it's a what's your three question. She said, Yen or Triss? I've been dying to know. Oh, man. She, Are those your, like, you your girlfriends? You apparently got her into what's your three. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm really glad you're still playing that. I think you're further along than I am. Can I have which context makes for this question? Okay, uh, there are... Well, there are, there are two main love interests mm, uh, right. for that's Geralt in The Witcher. Like. Yeah. Um, historically, through the whole series, Yennefer and Triss, and um, Triss, Triss Marigold. I mm-hmm. think, I think for me, Gosh. it's Triss, uh, because she seemed her, at least from where I am in the story now, and what I know from the past, I think I like her character more. What color um, hair do they both have? Triss has, has red hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> 
And Yennefer, you, I need, I actually need to get uh, Kat to tell me because I think maybe I met Yennefer early, early on in the game, but I've been, I've been doing so many side quests and everything that I haven't uh, really met her. I was just in her room, if you're uh, in that area, but I haven't seen her. Yeah, I was going through her things, uh, trying to find her. Um, I know she wears white and black, and she smells of berries. And something else. The cat's, Elder, cat's like, what is wrong with you? You should know all this stuff. I only get to play maybe 30 minutes a night. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I would You're say Triss. I would say gamer. Triss. I know I'm not, okay? I know it. I know it, and I have to live with that fact. This is, this is the Gatekeeper's podcast. Oh. Define who the game is. <laughs> oh, man. This is awesome. Did you guys ever play the South Park first game? The Stick of Truth? Yeah. I watched my roommate play it. It's very funny. It's one of those that watching is just as good. It really is just yeah. as good as playing it. Um, but I, have, oh. I really want to play the new one, haven't yet? I'm, yeah. I'm, I've died too many times. Well, get row. ready. Watch this. She said, yes, Yen was the first lady you met in the game. She has black hair. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. What does she smell like, though? She wears, like, a very particular perfume. Is there like smell the vision thing. in the game? Can you actually smell? No, it? they just make they make, make sure to mention it every it. few minutes. Um, it's like a narrator. The hero smells <laughs> the scent of lavender perfume. Oh, I can't. I can't believe I can't think of what it is. I'm gonna be. Whoa, we're doing it. Is it frankincense? Yeah, frankincense and myrrh. I think is what <laughs> they said. Um, we're just gonna get over here. Get out of here. So, what what games did you play when you were growing up? Besides. Power Stone 2. Oh, Resident Evil was a massive... The, fir the first Resident one? Evil, the first one, was massive mm. for me. Um, I was a kid, I want to say middle school. Sounds about right. And um, same place, same place. Mm. Um, it was the first really scary game that I had ever played. And it just blew me away. I loved it. Mm. Um, the wonderful voice acting. Um, Chris? <laughs> Is this Chris's blood? Uh, all that. I just love it. Always have a place in my heart. Well, you are the master of unlocking. Yes, the master of unlocking. Oh, I have such fond memories of that. I really love the live action bit at the beginning that they had. Oh it's yeah, like the, with the helicopter and everything. Yeah, it looked. It was really well done. It was. I kind of wish like oh, I can't. The Resident Evil movie was like that. Oh, it's too late. I know, right? Actually, Mila Jovovich wasn't bad. It I do. Was I do. Have to full motion stuff, video. Yeah. They, they should make a movie that's just one long quick time event. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, whole, the whole theater has to press A at the right time. Or you start over. <laughs> start the that's movie awesome. Over. <laughs> that's so awesome. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, that was huge for me. Uh, Soul Blade. No, was it Soul Cal? It was Soul Blade, I think. The first one before mm -hmm. Soul Calibur. That was huge for me. Um, for a fighting game. Oh, and Ridge Racer on PlayStation Ooh. 1 was like... My jam. I don't know why I'm. So you were PlayStation over Nintendo. I Your was well, over. no, because I was an Inten an NES kid and an SNES kid, mm -hmm. but I did not get a Super or um, N64. Oh. I never got an N64. My buddy Victor had one, um, and we would play well, that's with him. That's why you have friends, is to kind of fill in the. Got it. Yep. He had a 3DO. Wait, what? He had a 3DO. What's a 3DO? It had Gex, the Gecko game. I remember Gex. Gex. I don't. I was 3DO a. Uh, it was, it was a whole system. It was a whole system. It was the company 3DO. It did not go well. <laughs> no, I'd... much like the Dreamcast. Sorry, Sega. Oh. Oh, the Dreamcast had it had a life afterwards quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, after Sega was done. So Kat's doing has been doing some research for us. Okay. She Good. said, uh, "I don't know what she smells like." <laughs> okay. Google says her perfume is lilac and gooseberry. Yes, gooseberry. lilac and gooseberry. gooseberry. And there is an Jeez. Etsy shop who makes it if you want to buy it. Oh, that's Ooh. awesome! I'm gonna do that. For your and, completionist uh, cosplay. Yep. Charles said, "I was in my early twenties, and Resident Evil scared the crap out of me." Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> I returned Resident Evil. Uh, because I bought it and it was it was well it was both scary and the controls were terrible. The controls were pretty bad. And I gotten it. It was like an old game by the time I got it. And so I was, I was used to good controls. I was always a Silent Hill camp. Yes. Yeah, Silent Hills. Those those would just creep the crap Dude, out. Dude, Silent Hill Two was the one that. Yeah. In the opening, where yeah. the, the like the radio sound. I think oh, I remember. Oh, the monsters and, in that one were really good too. Dude, dude, yeah, all all day. 
But Resident Evil, just the first one I played, you know, mm -hmm. alone in my room as a kid mm -hmm. until like three in the morning. Wow, really? <laughs> um, and it just really freaked me out. I would tell you a story about my friend Victor, but I won't. Okay. Tell me Victor, you know you know what happened when you, when we were kids and we were playing Resident Evil. Yourself. You know what you did, Victor. We both we we both just had to stop and he went home because we were like, <laughs> nope, we're done. We're going. This is enough. That's enough. Uh, I was playing one a game one time where I I was playing with my friend. I screamed, threw the controller up in the air. My friend caught the controller and then. Uh, beat the beat the level. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, who's your friend, and how can we get him to host this? Yeah. Show? Oh, no, right, he's way cool. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Do you guys have a guitar hero here too? We, well, technically yes. Up. Oh but man. This well, this so you can't say it on the stream, but we just have like a corner of uh, all kinds of fun things, some, which oh. aren't. Adam. Technically ours. Mm -hmm. By the way, Adam said, Matt, I just posted my video recut for client review. Can I go home now? Uh, yeah, well, we'll see you later, Adam. Have a wonderful day. Uh, rest of your night, your evening. Um, okay, this is um, this is part of the virtual boy, right? What? Right? No, I think that's a... No, uh, it looks yeah. like a drill, that's maybe, a for this, I think. Oh, what are box of mystery. What do we have here? Right. Oh, Lego Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Indiana yep. Jones, Grand Theft Auto 4, Dude. Batman Arkham Asylum. If any Actually, of you would like to watch us play any of these games... We never... I think the, it's backwards compatible, right? We oh, have was that Star Wars Battlefront 2? Oh. oh. Why haven't we been playing this every single week? I know, right? The good mm. one. That's what? the good one. This is, have you played this one? I, yeah, I have, and yeah. I can't believe... I can't believe that we could actually play this right now. I know, right? Should we... Should we just turn this off? Hey, do we have two it. hours left? How many, how many more hours left do we have? Seriously, I mean, when I was... So the last place I was living with roommates, uh, there would be times when we would play some games, and then about midnight, 1 a.m., we'd roll around, like, let's play Power Front 2, and then we'd stay up to, like, 4 in the morning yep. playing it. It's a solid game. It was, it was uh, really fun. It's like Halo 2 I wish we would just reskin it. Yeah, just put some HD textures on it. That's all it it's needs. It's good to go. All it needs. We've got Should we call EA? and Aerosmith. It still blows my mind that they made a guitar hero that was just Aerosmith. Wait, it actually is? Yeah, that's, that's yeah. a real Sweet thing. Motion, Dream On, Walk This Way, Love in an Elevator, Mama Can, Train Keep a Rolling. And that's it. Oh no, so we've got Lenny Kravitz, The Clash, The Colt, Joan Jett, and The Blackhearts. So oh. we got four other artists. Wait, are they doing covers of Aerosmith songs? Mm -hmm. But it's not in here. <laughs> oh no! Wait, let's, are any Wait a second. Okay, yes, okay, okay, it exists. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I think it's in here. I think they doubled up. Yeah, yeah. there it is. So once you guys Somebody hit... doesn't take care of their games. Oh, man. Once you hit the one-hour mark on this show, what do you what do? You do? Uh, then we, we just keep going until it gets until boring. It gets and boring. Oh, okay. Oh, crap. So. Is it boring yet? Sorry, guys. Uh, the hardest okay. lesson I've learned oh, yeah, in the industry... We never hand our guests the... We should just um, hand, like, you, you do it. <laughs> you do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just going to go. You finish out. <laughs> Oh man, I, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, what's, we that, could, what's we the could, What time is it actually? We could probably. It's like 8 thir or 8.35. Read an analog watch. I still yeah. have, to, I have to do work after this. Oh, geez. Uh -oh. Yeah, I have a QA I need to do. Yeah. It's okay. The I mean, night is young. I've been wanting to do more of those like marathon streams um, where you just play like yeah. a game for 12 hours. Can. Can you guys do that? Like, will you? Would you be down to do that for real here? Uh, yeah. Because this is pretty comfy. Uh, you've comfy. got a fridge We've got over there. Fridge and snacks. Um, yeah. We have a keg as well. You know, but if we drink and try to play for a long time. <laughs> I mean, that's what we It'll did. Work out fine. Early on, that's what we. That's yeah. what we did the. Well, that wasn't like twelve hours at a time, but we played that Majora's Mask game yeah, for was, at least three or four hours. That one was. That first one was like eight, I think. Was it eight? Yeah, I, I think that's like one I you might have done by yourself for eight hours. Oh, you can run because I have a life. Oh yeah, with the trigger. I didn't realize. Adam that. said, "Do a live stream for charity." Those are always popular. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we, I would totally. But I'm totally selfish. Get back over here. Oh no! Why would, would I do, do that? Why would I do? That? I thought I could jump. Oh over. yeah, that pipe looked. Um, it's in the foreground. It's mm -hmm. obviously foreground. Come on, come on, Matt. We can do this. <laughs> what charity we sh should we do? Quick. Uh, charity car cars for kids. Cars for kids. <laughs> <laughs> I so like kids yachts today are for children. One in hundred cars for kids. Yachts for tots. Yinglings for younglings. Uh, yep. Yes. What was that? 
Yeah, Adam said uh, the Atlantic Humane Society. There you go. Which would be oh. very close to my heart. I like puppies and doggies and kitties. What? Get over here. And what he used to volunteer at the Forsyth County Humane Society. My and dad to was applied to be a volunteer president of that one for a wow. while. Wow. Really? Oh, nice. Yeah. Dude, that's really cool. Uh, yeah, my dad was the president. All of my, or two of my animals were adopted from there. Oh, oh my gosh. That place always smelled so bad. <laughs> I said people go nuts for dog charities. That's true. Yeah. Oh no. oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I really messed up, oh, guys. I really messed up. Oh, I failed you. I failed everyone oh, watching. Oh, now we got to do all this again. Oh. We can just stop if you want. Um, I'm really, I'm really sorry to let's let you do, down. Let's just do like a lightning round of. Okay, lightning round. Let's go. You didn't do. Okay. Uh, okay. Favorite project that you've worked on. Favorite project is stuff they don't want you to know because I created it and it's my baby. Hardest lesson you've learned. Hardest lesson I've learned. Every time you go on a shoot, no matter how prepared you are, you will fail at something. <laughs> something will fail, and it won't be your fault. Something is going to fail. No, it'll still Marky's be your fault. fault. Sometimes it's your fault. Usually it's your fault, but sometimes it's not, and you can hold that as, like... I had a directing okay. teacher who, she called call it Uncle Murphy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that is very true. Okay, next one uh, might be related. Advice. What advice would you give someone that's giving them to start in this industry? Um, okay. Start on your own. When, and by that I mean do like research get I mean, you might be a fan of these kind of things you might be interested in it maybe you went to school for it um, just be interested personally um, and don't ever lose that oh. ability to get crushed by a simple object in a game while you're trying to talk about <laughs> how to do well I, again here's my thing I got lucky they there happened to be on the list list serve like right. the month after I graduated, a uh, job opportunity for me, and it was just an internship, but it was a job opportunity. Nobody works for a company for ten years out of luck. It's because they're good at their job. Right. Well, well you've gotten the well, initial thing that, out of luck, but, but keeping it is definitely yeah. But getting the initial thing right now is the that's how the what it's all about. Trying to get a job, and thankfully in this city we actually have an industry that we can. You oh. Know, yeah. What up? Tenth and fate. Matt is extremely humble and will not tell you how hard he works and how good he is at things, but that's what I'm here for. Oh, I found a special. <laughs> found a um, Melissa doesn't know what she's talking about. Uh, she don't know me. And, uh... <laughs> I've been friends for, like, over a decade. No, no I'm, only, I'm only kidding. No. Um, I mean, if you have to be in this industry, kind of the lesson is you're going to be you're going to have to pull some long hours because if yes, you don't, sir. there's someone else who will. Yeah. Yes. That's that's kind of the dude. That's that's the that's the downside to this is because everybody wants to do it, so everybody's trying to do it. This is I'll, I'll leave you with a serious but um, in kind of a dark. I don't know. I I'll just leave you with something here. Um, when we so. We, our YouTube channel, the House Silver's YouTube channel, used to post all of the shows mm. and everything would get uploaded there. Then around 2013, um, we started our own, like each show got its own YouTube channel because there was this company called Rev3 with Discovery that wanted to do it that way, mm. um, separate everything out. So you could really, in their mind, separate the wheat from the chaff, basically, mm. like what's working, what's not working. Mm. Um, anyway. Long story short is that there was a month period there where I had to work really hard to get uh, stuff they don't want you to know ready for this YouTube channel, this new YouTube channel, and make more videos every week. We would do two to three videos a week that I would have to produce, and a ton of research. Awesome. And um, he did all the legwork. I would stay at work until two in the morning, like every night, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't see my wife, and. Uh, my grandfather was in the hospital at the time, and mm. he, you know, it wasn't going very well for him. And I had to, in order to get where I wanted to go and continue to be sex successful in the industry, I felt like I had to just put I'm those sexy. hours in and go and work. And um, anyway, it, it's something yeah. I regret. It's something yeah. I regret because, you know, I didn't get to be with my grandfather in some of the last days of his life, right. and I really wish I would have been. But oh, it, more. but it did lead to, I think, bigger and better things in my life personally. Outside of that, so I guess I know it's a hard thing to even really work. Like, what am I saying? I'm just saying you will have to make sacrifices 
with those around you sometimes with relationships just because of the hours and the commitment that you're going to have to put into it if you want to be really successful. And it stinks and it's hard, but it's worth it a lot of times. All right, so here's some love for you. Adam said, Matt is living proof that loving what you do means you work way harder than you have to because you don't know any other way. And Kat said, every time I ask about Matt, he's always working his butt off. He used to be in the Tech Stuff Twitch chat, but hasn't been because he's too busy. <laughs> very kind oh, people. I forgot that. I was still racing with Snake. Very, very sweet people. I like both of those people. Oh! oh! Oh my gosh. Shut down all the garbage disposals <laughs> on the detention level. Garbage disposals? <laughs> Do you not? Shut down all the garbage disposals <laughs> on the detention level. It wasn't garbage, it was trash compactors. You yes. know what I mean. Okay. Come on, if you're going to quote Star Wars. Yeah, because garbage right. disposals are a whole different thing. <laughs> well, I thought in that scene he called them out right. garbage disposals. Adam knows. Adam will tell you. He knows... At, uh, our friend, oh, our friend Adam can quote oh, every wait, is there no, how do I movie sprint? ever, it's every quote. Uh, Adam can quote every episode of The Simpsons ever, like verbatim, mm -hmm. yeah. every single one. So Adam, oh, Adam, what what is uh what does Leslie Nope call you? <laughs> Culture vulture. <laughs> oh. I just kidding. Amy Poehler has a nickname for our friend Adam. <laughs> She nicknamed him, which means I'm that much closer to Amy Poehler. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty <laughs> awesome. That pretty, pretty stinking awesome. That one goes down. Right, breathing. Oh! <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. All right, well, yes. um, yeah. Do you want to plug anything before? Uh, sure. Obviously, Atlanta Monster. Oh uh, well, yeah. Well, let's let's do it this way. Okay. Um, Kill. Atlanta Monster is on Apple Podcasts right now. It comes out every Friday, uh, midnight, so Thursday morning. And um, it's an investigative podcast about the missing and murdered children of Atlanta from 1979 to 1981. Oh, uh, that nice. It's intense, but I think you'll like it. What is this? It's made by Up and Vanished Payne Lindsay oh. and How Stuff Works. And also, I guess the best, you can just search Atlanta Monster and you will find what you need to find. The other is Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. On all the socials, we are at conspiracy stuff oh, fuck. on Twitter and Facebook and on Instagram conspiracy stuff show um, we put out weekly episodes on Fridays about everything from UFOs to ghosts and secret societies the uh, the truth behind the banker plot <laughs> the business plot uh, and everything in between so like uh, what's the deal with essential oils What's like why? The what's the deal with those? Oils? Can they actually heal everything? If they're essential, why haven't no. I used them for so long? Well, there's you know we're we're gonna be looking into that soon. Uh, we, I'm not gonna give away spoilers here, like like other people. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh nice. Oh, uh, I foreground. I didn't get uh, but yeah, stuff they don't want you to know. Find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Yep. All right. Also, uh, just how stuff works and stuff media in general. We have tons of new shows coming out all the time. Omnibus, Movie Crush with Chuck Bryant. Uh, there, there's so many I can't even think of them all. There may or may not be something about the Grammys coming out. Uh, we're we're talking about the best music that exists according to the Grammys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, lots right. of stuff. All that's right. Great. Well, that's, cool. Uh, that's a Tuesday. Uh, feel better, Katie. Those dates. Oh, uh, before we go, <laughs> uh, Terminus. Uh, you may have heard of it. This, what? This uh, conference and festival that we Whoa, are associating that ourselves with. No. Uh, the actual dates for that are June 15th through 17th. Cool. Uh, the submissions for games and film are open right now, so if you at home have movies or games that you want to submit, go to uh, terminusevent.com for details. Uh, on how to submit. Oh, no. Is there any length that a movie has to be? I think it's like there's a short film and short. A, a feature length. Or no, it's not a feature we don't length anymore. Feature length. Uh, so if you have a feature length, short sorry. Film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get up below Come 60 minutes. Pick your favorite scene. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> all right, well, that's that should be all the information we have to get up Good there. plugs. <laughs> um, Google.com for all your search needs. Mm -hmm. That's um, duck, no, bing. Duck, duck, go. Duck, duck, go. One hundred percent. Duck, duck, go. If you need to bing something, if you need to bing S G, bing Jeeves. Yep. Uh, if you got a Yahoo Jeeves, uh, get his bing. Do you guys remember Dogpile? Oh yeah, yeah. Dogpile, Alta Vista. The company that used to own How Stuff Works called Infospace 
owned Dogpile and a bunch of these other search oh. sites. Didn't they also own WebMD as well? Uh, that was a whole oh, other was company, a company owned okay. WebMD. Yeah, Jeff Arnold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I just wave until it goes away.